Okay guys, this is a northern red-backed salamander. Um, I haven't filmed these guys much because we've got tons of them up here in Pennsylvania. So I forget that they're not super common all over the place. Okay, this one's a little large. And uh, these guys, I believe, are in the lungless salamander family order. So they don't actually don't have lungs. They don't breathe like we do. You know, they actually exchange oxygen from their, through their skin. Now these guys come in a couple of color variations. One of them is the lead black, which is pretty much a black, slate gray, or black salamander. It lacks the red stripe. Um, up in the mountains, you generally find this kind. In the lowlands, you can find a mixed race, you know. Some lead backs, some regular ones like this. But they're both the red back species. Northern red back. These guys like to eat insects and snails, slugs, little roly-poly bugs, beetles, hard-shelled and soft-shelled beetles. And you'll often find these little guys away from water, throughout the woodlands, you know, in the forest, under rocks and logs, under leaves, under just about anything they could get underneath. So, really cool salamanders, though. This is a good sized one, almost four inches. They don't usually get much bigger than four inches or so. But a really, really cool species of salamander. Not to be overlooked, right? These guys are cool too. And there is the lead back variation. Same species, same everything, just different colors. This one's lead colored. You know, I wants to get out of the sun. It's a hot day. Well, it's not hot, but it's warm. I don't want this guy to drive out. They need that protective mucus on their skin so that they can breathe and protect themselves. Here is a good example of the two variations of the northern redback. So you got the, the dark face, the lead face, and the red-backed face. Both variations right there. There's another red back. See her? Check this out, guys. We have a red back salamander, a rather large one. They don't usually get this big, but if you look at the tail, you can tell that this one had lost its tail at one point and regrew a new tail because it's darker. See that dark? How the tail just gets dark? Very characteristic of a new tail on a salamander, especially on a red back. This is a red back salamander. Very common around here. That is a bipallium, a type of land planarian. These guys will actually consume snails, slugs, and other worms. That's what they eat. They're from, uh, I think, Southeast Asia. And they're not native, obviously, with what I just said. But it's kind of a good thing to see these guys because we have way too many earthworms. Uh, the earthworms are not native to this country. Ours died out in the last ice age. So it's good to see these guys because they actually feed on them. They find like their trails and they follow it to their prey. If they find like a slug trail, they actually travel up the trail until they find the slug or snail or whatever. Then they'll eat them. They have kind of eject their stomach onto them. Their muscles will wrap around the prey and then they just kind of digest them. Uh, so it's a really interesting species. They're flatworms. They kind of have a hammerhead shape. Maybe you'll see that on this guy. That little hammerhead type look. Sometimes it's round like a shovel, sometimes it's pointed. But there you go. Bipallium. Land planarian. Cool stuff, huh? Kind of a crazy creature. Look at all those ant eggs. Right now they're taking the eggs out of the sunlight. Because I exposed them, they have to get the eggs out of the sunlight rapidly. So I'm going to cover this back up so that they don't have to do unnecessary work.